So today by popular demand and as a follow-up to my last week's video where I showed you how you can fix the damaged paint on the hood of this car using nothing but rally cans, I'm going to show you how you can wet sand and polish this newly sprayed clear coat on the hood of this car and turn the orange peel you see on the screen into this. That's right. Now we're not going to be going for a mirror-like finish on the hood because the adjacent panels still have some orange peel on them as well. They're obviously a lot more clear, but if we were to wet sand this newly sprayed clear coat completely flat and then polish it, it would give us a mirror-like finish, but then it would stand out way too much compared to the adjacent panels. And that sort of defeats the whole purpose because we want to blend this panel, make it look like this was never resprayed. Now you might ask, why don't you wet sand and polish the adjacent panels as well? Well, we can't wet sand these because the clear coat is already wearing thin, especially on the top of these panels. And every time you wet sand clear coat, you're taking some off and that's way too thin to be wet sanded. We can polish it, but we can't wet sand it and make it look like a mirror like finish like we would be able to do with this hood if we were to wet sand this completely flat. All right, so first things first, we're gonna rinse down our hood and all the panels we're gonna be polishing. Next, you wanna get yourself a clean bucket of water and then you wanna add some car wash soap or some dish soap to it. And then by using a microfiber sponge or a towel, you wanna to wash down the hoods. Now these steps seem pretty basic, but they're very important because if you leave anything, any little piece of dirt stuck to the clear coat, and then you go to wet sand or polish that area, then you know you can pick up that piece of dirt debris, spread it around and create all sorts of scratches and swirl marks that don't need to be there. So yeah, you need to be thorough with these cleaning steps. All right, next, first we thoroughly rinse it off. Now, if you really want to be thorough, you can dry this off and then use some grease and wax remover, and that will definitely get rid of all the remaining waxes, greases, or the dish soap, or the car wash detergent that you use to wash the hood. And next, we'll wipe down and dry our panels. Now, there is another step before we go on to wet sanding that you're gonna to need to do if you're gonna be wet sanding or just polishing an older panel, an older, older panel where the clear coat wasn't just sprayed onto the panel like this hood that we have here. And that is, you need to use a clay bar to pull out the dirt and gunk that has etched itself into the clear coat. So as you can see, this clay bar is quite sticky. And here I'll demonstrate to you on this door. So you get some uh, water or detailing spray that came with your clear, uh, clay bar on the panel. Also make the clear bar wet as well. And then you just simply go over the panel like this. And then by doing that, this will pull out the dirt and gunk out of the clear coat. That way, when you go to polish or wet sand your clear coat, you're not spreading that around. I only did a few seconds of this on this door, so we didn't pull out a whole lot of gunk, but I think you guys get the idea. So yeah, I'm not gonna be clay barring this hood, but I will clay bar these adjacent panels quickly. Now I don't expect to be pulling out a whole lot of dirt because they feel really smooth. They're pretty clean. They don't have a lot of gunk and dirt stuck in there clear so but i'll still do it because this is this is a step you can't really skip also if you're going to be doing this on really old paint you'll definitely be able to tell the difference as you start using the clear bar you can feel and hear the coarseness that's on the clear coat and then as you as you keep doing it it will get smooth and smooth and then finally it'll be completely smooth so yeah we we'll rinse it down one more time and dry off our panel and now that we're done with the washing and rinsing and all that we're going to pull the car into the garage and finish the job in the shade you guys can see the orange peel on the clear coat much better if you were to look at that shop light or this one or any of them really or simply the ceiling. You can see the orange peel and keep this in mind. We'll do it before and after of course. All right now on to wet sanding. So first get yourself a clean bucket of water and then if you're going to be sanding by hand I suggest you get a soft sanding block like this. And as always links to all products I use on the videos in the description and the comment section. Now, as far as what grit sandpaper you need to use, you should usually use either 1500 grit or 2000 grit sandpaper. Now, of course, some people use 1500 grit sandpaper and then 2000 grit on top of that, and then they go on to compounding and polishing. Benefit of that is you spend a little bit more time sanding, but then you have an easier time or a shorter period where you have to compound and polish because you're dealing with 2000 grit sandpaper. And others like us that don't need to bring this to a mirror-like finish, just simply use 2000 grit sandpaper and then compound and polish over that. Now, before we get to sanding, make sure you tape the edges of your panel, but also we'll go ahead and tape the center of our panel as well for a good before and after shot. So that way we can tell if we actually accomplished anything. So next, again, you get yourself a clean bucket of water, and then by using a wet microfiber towel or a sponge, 
you can wet your panel or the area that you're sanding and start going at it. And again, you, it's better to split this into sections and do sections at a time. And then what you can do is, if you have one of these soft sanding blocks, you can use the bottom of it to kind of dry off the area that you've been wet sanding. So yeah, in this area, we just spent like 20, maybe 25 seconds wet sanding this area. And if you were to look at the, the light, you can see that this is wet sanded, fairly decent, but it's not flat either. You can still see a little bit of orange peel. So if you were to polish this, compound and polish this, it would be shiny and better than that side by far, but still it wouldn't be the mirror-like finish. So this is pretty much what we want to have all over this panel. So that's what we're gonna do. So it's been about 10, 15 minutes later, and this is what we have. Now, as you can see, some areas are a bit more sanded than other areas. For example, this area, let's say right up here, is more or less flat compared to this area right next to it where it's sanded less. And you know, this is pretty much not gonna be a perfect, it's not gonna be an exact science if you're doing it like this, trying to keep some of the orange peel. But once you uh, compound and polish it, it will look, you know, they all blend in and it will look much better. All right, next up, we go on to compounding and polishing. But before we go on there, we're gonna to touch briefly on what these words mean, what you need to use for each step. Also, we'll touch briefly upon the type of polisher or buffer you might wanna use. So for starters, when we're talking about cutting compound or compounding, we're talking about using a heavy duty cutting compound of your choice with a coarse foam pad or a wool pad to go over heavy scratches like the 2000 grit sand scratches we put on this panel. Now obviously there's quite a few different manufacturers that make these. I like to use Meguiar's compounds for both cutting and polishing. Uh, you can use whatever you're accustomed to. As far as foam pads, it's actually better to use a waffle foam pad. They actually work better than these flat ones, but I don't have any waffle ones right now, so we're gonna be using this. But as far as the wool pad, the wool pad is okay too, but it, it, it cuts better, it cuts more and quicker. But also, if you're new at this, it's a little bit more dangerous, also depending on what type of buffer you're gonna use. We'll touch up on that later. So after that step, you wanna polish using a foam polishing pad and the polishing compound of your choice. So yeah, by using these, you get rid of the swirl marks and the minor scratches you put on your panel when you use the coarse foam pad or the wool pad or the cutting compound that you use with them. So after you use these, you get rid of the swirl marks, then you're ready for the final step, which is, the, which is when you use a finishing foam pad and a finishing product. Now we're not gonna use that third step, the final step, to put any kind of finishing products like a wax or a gel on top of this panel because this clear coat is newly sprayed and you need to wait about four to six weeks or even longer to make sure that your clear coat cures properly before you put any type of sealer or wax on your clear coat. Also some people, depending on the products they use or what they used to, they use these words interchangeably, especially polishing and finishing. So you need to keep that in mind. All right, next up, the type of buffer or polisher that you can use. All right, so first up, the old school rotary buffer. On those, you get a geared pad that spins in one direction. Benefits of those is that they cut faster or they polish faster. The downside is that you can get a spot hotter than it needs to be, especially like on a body line, and then you can burn through your clear coat or your paint and damage your paint. But if you have one of those with some experience, you can really work fast through a panel. Next up, a dual action polisher, which we have right here that people confuse with the other type of polisher that we'll talk after this. These basically, you're geared spinning the pad and also you do orbits like this, but both actions are geared. And the way you know you have one of these is that you can't stop it from spinning by hand. These are also called force rotation, dual action, orbital polishers. But anyway, as far as safety goes when working with these on a panel, these are obviously between the rotary polisher and the random orbital polisher. Now a random orbital polisher oscillates just like this dual action polisher, but the oscillation is random. Also the spinning of this pad is not geared and is as a result of the oscillation of the pad. So if you have one of those, you turn it on, you can just put your hand on it and stop the pad from spinning. So the benefit of that is because not only the orb orbit or the oscillation is random, but also you can't really put too much force on it because otherwise it will just stop spinning. 
you're gonna have a hard time destroying a paint job. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead with this dual action polisher. Now, as far as how you use a polisher, for those of you that are new to this, if you were to imagine my hand as the pad, you start here, let's say. Of course, you wanna uh, you know, cut your panel into sections and work one section at a time. So you start here, you move up, over 50%, down, over 50%, up, so on and so forth, until you get to, let's say here, and then you wanna switch over and go left to right. So you go left to right, down 50%, down, 50% overlap, and then you work your way down. And you wanna do this until the cutting compound or whatever compound you're using starts to win, starts to wear very thin, and that's when you wanna stop, wipe down your panel, check your work, and you do that as how many times as it takes to get the results you need to get. All right, so first we put on our cutting compound. You can put it on however you like. You can put it on your pad first. So you spread it around. That way it doesn't start flinging all over the place and you know, all over your panels and yourself when you start working your polisher. And then you start off in the lowest setting, spread it around some more, and then you bump it up to a higher setting and with uh, minimal pressure, you, you go the route we talked about. All right, so here's how things look after the first pass, obviously tons better than the other areas that we haven't compounded yet. But also this looks deceiving that to you on camera, it might look almost done and we can finish up and go out drinking. But I'll tell you, you wanna hold off on that at least for another hour because this compound that you put on here with your buffer actually kind of works as a bit of a wax and it can hide stuff. The, the correct way to, to be able to tell whether you're done or not is to completely clean this off with grease and wax remover, take it out under the sun and then look at it, and I bet you you'll see that you're nowhere near done. And it's not unheard of to go over the same section, you know, three, four, maybe even five times with the buffer. But I'll do two, maybe three more times this section, actually do the whole panel, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I just got done compounding. I also wiped down the panel with some grease and wax remover. It already looks really good, but if you were to look at the reflection of the light or actually just an inch to the right of it as we slowly moved around, you can see the minor scratches and swirl marks that are still on this panel. Here at this angle, you might be able to see them better. There's definitely a lot of swirl marks. You would even see them much better if we were outside in the sun. But anyway, that's where the polishing foam pad and the polishing compound come in. So that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna split this hood into another section. Now, as far as how you can apply the polishing compound, pretty much the same way as far as the way you travel with your buffer. Plus you have more leeway as in, this is a really soft foam pad. Plus this is a lot less coarse than the cutting compound. So you can apply more pressure. Also, you can go a lot faster to polish quicker as well. All right, so just got done polishing this section. Now let's do a before and after or a comparison to this section that hasn't been polished. Now hopefully this camera will do it justice. Look closely around that shop light. So here's just with compounding and right past that line, that's polished. Polished, not polished. If you look at around that light, you can probably see the swirl marks when you compare it to this side that's been polished. 
All right, so next I'm gonna finish up polishing this side of this hood and then we'll take it outside under the sun and give you guys the money shot. All right, and now the money shot. All right, so here's how things look before and after at about 10 feet out. And then as we get closer, if we were to look at the reflection of the building, so this is the side with orange peel, obviously. And this is the side that we wet sand and polished. As you can see, it's a lot more clear. Also at this angle, you can even see exactly how clear the reflection of the building is on this side that we wet sand and polished. Is it a mirror reflection? Probably not, but it's actually pretty close, especially in some of the areas. All right, here's another good before and after in the garage. So here's before with orange peel. Here's after. Try to read the letters that are on this bottle. Before, after. All right, so next up, I'm gonna do some work and finish this side of the hood so that our customer can come and pick up their car later today. I'm kidding, of course. We're gonna call and tell them we're way too busy, can't finish their car, and then start drinking. And while I do that, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you wanna see more. Click on the link on this side of the screen, the description box, and the suggestion box if you wanna see more like it. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks a lot.